I think you'd have been forgiven for thinking that Fulham were going to be in trouble once they lost Alexander Mitrovic, when they almost lost Jao Palinha, because they didn't really look like they had a squad that could compete in the Premier League without those two players. Palinha ended up staying signing a new contract, but with the stabilisation being fractured between him and Fulham potentially with that move, he's had several injuries throughout the season that has made it so he's not as much of an impactful force as he was the previous year, but still it's left Fulham in no real danger whatsoever, still occupying a comfortable mid-table position within the Premier League, and that is all down to one man, their manager, Marco Silva, who I think is underrated in terms of his coaching, in terms of his tactics, in terms of just his overall management of the team, and he keeps them in that position by being well-structured, compact in defence and attack, and then also having quality counter-attacking play, and in defence, we'll go over that first, because that is probably Fulham most important aspect of their game. They played low on a defensive block. I, I've selected low here, as you can see, um, just because I think that's more what they revert to. They don't typically press either. If anything, I'm going to move that down a step. It's more about keeping positions, drawing opponents in, and then forcing them into giving the ball away through a lack of space to play through. And so as you'd expect, these guys drop down into the wide midfield positions. Pereira moves up alongside whoever the striker is. I've gone Munoz, just because he's the striker on form at the minute. So give him his flowers. And in defence, this is how they look. 4-4-2. They don't go and press the first line of build-up from the opposition, which is typically their defenders. They'll sit a little bit deeper, soak up pressure. And if the opposition try and play around this front two, you'll get Harry Wilson or Alex Wobie, if it's on that side, coming up to press this area. And the midfield two, I feel like, do a fantastic job of covering the space in behind. Harrison Reed will shift across. Jao Palinha will shift across. Alex Wobie will shift across. And they'll just stop that from becoming an issue. Uh, Castagna can get pushed forward into a, a more pressing position as well on that side and vice versa on the other side with Robinson which forces the opposition back to their defence they'll allow themselves to gain shape back into their 4-4-2 as you can see here and if they try and build up through the opposite side as I was just saying rinse repeat Alex Awobi will press stop, and stop that from progressing into a dangerous area Robinson alert on that side Palina on the cover and when they're in more of a mid-block, it actually does become a little bit more complex because an opposition could do their build-up deeper and on the edge of their own box, which forces Fulham a bit further up the pitch. But Jao Palini will typically be the deeper sitting midfielder in that midfield four, covering the space in between defence and midfield. Now the issue is, is this leaves space either side for him, but in Aradabayo and Calvin Bassey, they're very alert defenders capable of stepping out into that zone if that space becomes available and the opposition decide to play into it. They do a fantastic job of cutting it off, coming out there, pressing into this area here, allowing the fullbacks to cover around and form into a back three just within that transitional phase, which will then revert back to a back four when the danger's gone, Aradabayo coming back in. Calvin Bassi also is capable of doing it on that left-hand side, but the need for it is less because Palinia typically is on that side. Uh, dropping a little bit deeper and in Harrison Reed they've got a midfielder that's very capable of covering space in and around himself dropping in pushing forward if he feels like he needs to press in between the two forward players but very resilient very well structured and very responsible with the players in, involved in this defensive system and when they win the ball back it's direct it's fast paced it's attacking so they'll try and launch the ball up they're not a possession based team they won't play in boxes they won't play in triangles it will just be direct get the ball up to the big man up top as quick as possible now Rodrigo Munoz has been playing this role they've signed Armando Brozier on loan who hasn't featured really yet Raul Jimenez has come back into form this season you can see the type of striker they're after big physical target men strikers that play well with that back to goal and so when Fulham win the ball back he's got to get in front of the opposition's defense body him pin them back and just disrupt them making that sort of side run across them as the ball's coming over especially on the diagonal and just cause issues don't allow them to settle don't allow them to to rest and and easily win the ball and it's such a tireless job sometimes being a Fulham striker because you're not necessarily getting the service you'd want and you have to create a lot from almost impossible situations or no hope situations but the rewards coming from it is great and Andreas Pereira sits in the middle as the attacking midfielder and the wide players also come into this position here they play very centrally they play very narrow and try and congest the middle, looking for second ball opportunities. And then this is when you get the supply line from the wing backs who push forward into this position here. Look for the pass from Alex Wobie on that side, Harry Wilson on the other, to put crosses into the box that Munez or whoever the striker is in that particular position can score from. And in Harry Wilson, Andreas Pereira, and Alex Wobie, William when he's played there, Bobby Deckard over Reed. Technically good players, capable of playing in the centre of the pitch. And I have to say, Alex Wobie has been 
maybe the most underrated signing of the season. His press resistance is so underrated. He moves the ball well, whether that be through his passing or his technical ability. And on his side, he's playing with, again, maybe the most underrated left back in the Premier League, Anthony Robinson. He's got great athleticism, great pace, and is capable of providing great service to the strikers in the box. The right wing back consistently last season was occupied by Kenny Tett. Not been as consistent as he was last season. Him and Castagna have been rotated, and none of which I feel like have really been able to make that position their own. But two good options at the very least. And Harry Wilson as well will typically come in, uh, give that area a bit more support than maybe Iwobi is on that side, just because he has a bit more crossing ability. But when they sustain a period of attacks, that's what they look like. But when it's the counter-attacking opportunities, it's still relatively the same. It's just maybe the wing-backs won't get as forward as quickly as they would in this system and it will be more about the second ball opportunities to Iwobi, Pereira and Wilson who will then look to try and get in beyond the opposition's defence and create opportunities that way and they've got uh, good runners off the ball Harry Wilson's decent off the ball Iwobi's decent off the ball and Pereira's got great technical ability and with Munez or whoever the striker is as I was saying they can offer a great decoy to draw defenders towards him and bring that space around but all this is the work of Marco Silva. Fantastic again. Fulham, mid-table may seem boring to some, but I think for where this club is at and where this squad is at, it's a fantastic performance. And as long as they have Marco Silva for me, they won't ever really have to worry about the positions too far beneath them, in my personal opinion. But let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your opinion. Thank you for watching. In a bit, lads. <laughs>